Hey there, today I want to talk about my bespoke Windows 95 style ChatGPT app uh, that I made in the last, uh, you know, few days. I was actually inspired by myself. <laughs> so last time I talked in this on this channel, I was talking about the return of bespoke apps, as in apps that you build for yourself. And I got so excited uh, about it that, that I had to make one of the examples that I gave uh, for myself. And so today I just want to go through it uh, because I think it's it's cool. Um, uh, just to like, you know, more context in the previous video, obviously. But the main thing here is that with the more powerful APIs that we currently have, including things like ChatGPT and other LLMs, uh, it is now easier for a single developer to build apps that really help them and that are really tailor-made for their needs. That's one thing, more powerful APIs. And the other one is that it is now standard to have really good quality uh, frameworks for making UIs. So it's, it's really easy to build UIs, right? So I want to address this. Okay, so I have a Mac, right? I don't have a Windows 95 machine. Uh, it's uh, There is a reason why it looks like it looks like, it, why there's a, this Windows 95 look. Uh, I'll get to that. It's not just a gimmick, even. It's mostly a gimmick, but <laughs> it's not just that. And, um, but I want to tell you about like, what, what does this do even, right? So what this does is it's supposed to be a, a companion app for me for to, to always have it, like I normally have it over here, right? Obviously it's smaller, I, I just zoomed in, but I have it like here or here. And uh, it's all, it's supposed to be always kind of at least partly visible. Um, uh, and it has all the things that I kind of want to either check or use during the day, right? That are obviously also available elsewhere and via other shortcuts, but not as easily and not as in my face as, as here, right? So I want to just like go, go very quickly. So there's the, you know, uh, <laughs> not finished yet file menu. Um, this is by the way, I, I, I'm literally um, like, I have it running all the time uh, since Thursday, uh, but I also have it um, like in debug mode. So I, I, whenever I have an idea, I just change something here and it's done, right? So, uh, so, so that that's that's a nice thing. That's also a nice thing that people didn't have in in the past. Uh, all right, so. Uh, what do I do? Right, yeah, so so for example, right, when I want to do these snippets, I just click this button and it will open the, like, the things that I need to build these snippets. Like, for example, it will open a document where I have the kind of the, the steps that I need to never forget, uh, always remember. Or, and it will open QuickTime so that I can do the screencast and everything like this. So it's very easy for me to start these snippets. This is important because otherwise it's like, oh, okay, uh, where do I start? And that's the killer of any kind of productivity, right? It also has things like projects, which just opens uh, my files, uh, you know, my project directory, which is something that I try to teach myself to, and again, this is something that I could do in just regular Finder, right? I could open the the OS Finder and uh, navigate to projects in there, which is, uh, I have it in the left uh, bar, so it's not that hard, but it's still, I have to open the Finder that opens all the wind windows that I have with the Finder, often distracting me from what I want to do, and then I have to click on the projects and then I'm there, right? This just opens my projects uh, directory. I'm already there and I can just go into what I, I'm working on at the, at the moment, right? Um, 
It can open various websites, like, like several websites next to each other. This is my accounting and so on and so forth, right? So that's uh, uh, hopefully easy to understand. It's just shortcuts that I just click on and it's always there. I don't need to click on something and then oh, then show shortcuts and then click there. It's literally right there. That's that's the most important part for me. Then there's the what I call the bare minimum news. <laughs> that's uh, coming from Wikipedia. If you open Wikipedia, uh, you will have the, the news there. Uh, actually, let me... Let me try to find that here. Right. Uh, yeah. This is the. Uh, this is where I talked about bespoke apps last last video. I just wanted to show it. Um, all right. So Wikipedia. Uh, right. And over there, this is the. This is what I'm showing myself here. Right. And it is not. It. It's not like it has everything in it. Uh, and sometimes it has things that I would not really care about. Uh, right now, that's, you know, I wouldn't probably care about like who wins the most seats in New Zealand. But the cool thing about Wiki News is that it's almost always something that a lot of people, not necessarily in your area, but a lot of people really care about, right? So there's things. For example, like cricket, uh, someone won the cricket world championship. I don't follow cricket, but I know that literally hundreds of millions of people do. And so it's nice to be able to just, you know, have have a kind of an overview of what the world is, is caring about. And this updates, by the way, once in a few days, right? But it's, again, it's nice to have it right there, right here. I want to extend it with things that are not just world news, but also things that are important for me. Like, for example, oh, it's the new month now. You should probably go do your accounting. You know, kind of like that. Anyway, next up is basically a way to uh, get important for me Unicode uh, characters into my Flipboard, right? So I often find myself, let's, let's do this, uh, trying to, you know, find this particular string just because I like the this particular emoji. Uh, but also oftentimes, like I do this literally almost every day, I need to put somewhere uh, one half. I mean, I, I know that I could just do, you know, 0.5 or I could do one slash two, but that's lame. I love this one, you know. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's it's nice to be able to uh, just use the the characters that you know we are given by uh, the system by by Unicode, and that's possible again everywhere. It's possible everywhere, right? But you either have to memorize some kind of weird. Kung Fu with your keyboard or you have to go to and on Mac you have this like pull up menu uh, on the right side but it's always at least five clicks and sometimes you just don't want to do that if you're writing you're like no I don't I don't want to do that all right so so that's that's this part and then we're finally getting to the chat GPT part right so right now there's not much here um, as you can see but if I have anything in my, um, like if I have anything here, it clears, right? And if I have anything in my clipboard, it, I can just like paste it with one click. So I don't even have to like click into here, right? So, and it, this is important. I am an, oh, not a native speaker, right? I, I think you can guess. <laughs> um, and I think my English is functional, but sometimes I want my English to be not just functional, but to so that people so, so close to native that people who are native speakers can't tell that I'm not a native speaker. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I I, I feel I feel pretty confident that it's okay if you're if English is not your first language that you sometimes say things that native speakers wouldn't. 
I think that's fine. And I think most English speakers actually agree with me, you know, um, but 99%, right? Um, but it is uh, more professional at least, and just nice and less distracting if you have, for example, I don't know, if you're building a new computer game like I do, and you want to have a Steam page and the Steam page uh, should, you know, has some text in it. And then the text, it's nice to have the text written in a native English, English, you know, and of other times you write an important email or something like this. So I found myself a lot uh, talking to ChatGPT in the last, let's say, year, where basically my talk is, well, please rewrite the following email in a way that, you know, keeps the informality or the tone and everything, keep all the words uh, as, as they are. But if you find something that's not English, English, rewrite it to native English. And that's what it currently does. That's the only thing that it currently does through ChatGPT. And it helps me several times a week, sometimes many times a day when I'm working on something uh, with text, right? And I have I, I, other ideas, of course, what to, what to do next with, with this. So demo time. <laughs> um, I just want to show you first, actually, uh, uh, let's let me let me just show you. Uh, this is the code, right? So it's a button. I'm, I'm getting, getting back to Windows 95. Why it's Windows 95? But it's a button, and you, if you tap it, it will literally just uh, talk to... It will split things into paragraphs. Sometimes you have a long, long uh, thing that you talk about, uh, you know, like maybe like a long email or a long document. And normally ChatGPT would just say, this is too long. Uh, I don't, I don't know what to do with this. So I just split it into paragraphs and then I ask ChatGPT, you are a copy editor, blah, 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 blah all this, you know, um, and then the paragraph and then I get the message content into the edited paragraphs and then I just put them back to, to the text input field, right? So that's it. That's the... That's the whole idea. Let me go back. And as a demo, I think it's it's good to to do something like um, all right. I'm uh, I'm going to the toilet now. Now this is something that um, feels funny for a native speaker, but for almost anyone else who's not an English speaker, uh, toilet is the place. It's, or even the, you know, the, the initial, uh, the, the, the meaning of the word toilet was some kind of a cloth or whatever. And then it meant just the things that you do your hygiene with, you know, and then it was just hygiene. And then it was, okay, it's the, the place where you do the hygiene. At least that's where it ends uh, in, my, in my language, in Czech, right? So if you go to the toilet, you go to the restroom, you, or you go, you go do the thing, uh, but, but it doesn't uh, mean the, what it does in English. In English, if you go to the toilet, you go to the actual toilet, <laughs> like the, the thing that you sit on that's that's the meaning of toilet you uh, so so what i hope to get from here is that when i click english it will think for a minute and then it will less than a minute hopefully and then it will give me the what the native english person would say so all right so all right i'm going to the toilet now english all right i'm going to the bathroom now see that that's the kind of things that just is hard for an ESL non-native speaker to to do to see even and then to correct, um, and uh, it takes a lot of time and energy which can be spent elsewhere. All right, 
And then the last thing is that I have just like, you know, uh, what's the time and year progress is coming close to 80% people. So we're 80% there for 2023. All right, uh, and now I wanna address why it looks like this, right? So first of all, it's a gimmick. I like Windows 95 kind of, you know, the, this kind of style uh, for whatever reason. I, uh, I'm going to use the rest, okay? I can, you, you can actually try to, to do it several times. Um, I like the, the just the, the the whole vibe. I think is is fantastic, um, but uh, it's also like ugly, um, and and that's kind of the point, you know. Like because this is just for me, I don't care that it's ugly. Uh, I I kind of it doesn't. If it was nice, if the the visual language of the app was nice it would force me subconsciously to try to make it nicer and, you know, like um, add little flourishes to this. But because it looks like this uh, anyway, I don't care. It's it's so easy for me to just say, you know what, I'm gonna add a new button. It looks ugly, but whatever, you know. So so that's, that's, what, that's why it's there. And I think that's fine. Um, Yeah, is that it? I think that's it. <laughs> um, so the code I think is on GitHub. I'm pretty sure it is. I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's public, but you can look at it. I don't think it will be very useful for you uh, individually, but I hope it inspires some people to, to do more of these bespoke apps for themselves. Uh, okay, so thank you for watching and see you next time.